A solvent is a substance that dissolves a solute, resulting in a solution. A solvent is usually a liquid but can also be a solid or a gas. The maximum quantity of solute that can dissolve in a specific volume of solvent varies with temperature. Common uses for organic solvents are in dry cleaning, as paint thinners, as nail polish removers and glue solvents, in spot removers, in detergents and in perfumes. Solvents find various applications in chemical, pharmaceutical, oil and gas industries, including in chemical syntheses and purification processes. The global solvent market is expected to earn revenues of about US$33 billion in 2019. The dynamic economic development in emerging markets like China, India, Brazil, or Russia will especially continue to boost demand for solvents. Specialists expect the worldwide solvent consumption to increase at an average annual rate of 2.5% over the subsequent years. Accordingly, the growth rate seen during the past eight years will be surpassed. Solutions and Salvation When one substance is dissolved into another, a solution is formed. This is opposed to the situation when the compounds are insoluble like sand in water. In a solution, all of the ingredients are uniformly distributed at a molecular level and no residue remains. The mixture consists of a single phase with all solute molecules occurring as solvates, as opposed to separate continuous phases as in suspensions, emulsions or other types of mixtures. The mixing is referred to as miscibility, whereas the ability to dissolve one compound into another is known as solubility. However, in addition to mixing, both substances in the solution interact with each other at the molecular level. When something is dissolved, molecules of the solvent arrange around molecules of the solute. Heat transfer is involved and entropy is increased making the solution more thermodynamically stable than the solute alone. This arrangement is mediated by the respective chemical properties of the solvent and solute, such as hydrogen bonding, dipole moment and polarizability. Solvent classifications Solvents can be broadly classified into two categories, polar and nonpolar. Generally, the dielectric constant of the solvent provides a rough measure of a solvent's polarity. The strong polarity of water is indicated, at 0 AA degree Celsius, by a dielectric constant of 88. Solvents with a dielectric constant of less than 15 are generally considered to be nonpolar. Technically, the dielectric constant measures the solvent's ability to reduce the field strength of the electric field surrounding a charged particle immersed in it. This reduction is then compared to the field strength of the charged particle in a vacuum. In layperson's terms, dielectric constant of a solvent can be thought of as its ability to reduce the solute's effective internal charge. Generally, the dielectric constant of a solvent is an acceptable approximation of the solvent's ability to dissolve common ionic compounds, such as salts. Other polarity scales, dielectric constants are not the only measure of polarity. Because solvents are used by chemists to carry out chemical reactions or observe chemical and biological phenomena, more specific measures of polarity are required. Most of these measures are sensitive to chemical context. The grunwald winstein my scale measures polarity in terms of solvent influence on buildup of positive charge of a solute during a chemical reaction. Coase's Z scale measures polarity in terms of the influence of the solvent on UV absorption maxima of a salt, usually pyridinium iodide or the pyridinium zwitterion. Donor number and donor acceptor scale measures polarity in terms of how a solvent interacts with specific substances, like a strong Lewis acid or a strong Lewis base. The Hildebrand parameter is the square root of cohesive energy density. It can be used with nonpolar compounds, but cannot accommodate complex chemistry. Reichardt's dye, a solvatochromic dye that changes color in response to polarity, gives a scale of ET, 30, values. ET is the transition energy between the ground state and the lowest excited state in kilocalorie per mole, and identifies the dye. Another roughly correlated scale, can be defined with Nile red. The polarity, dipole moment, polarizability and hydrogen bonding of a solvent determines what type of compounds it is able to dissolve and with what other solvents or liquid compounds it is miscible. Generally, polar solvents dissolve polar compounds best and nonpolar solvents dissolve nonpolar compounds best.
like dissolves like. Strongly polar compounds like sugars or ionic compounds, like inorganic salts dissolve only in very polar solvents like water, while strongly non-polar compounds like oils or waxes dissolve only in very non-polar organic solvents like hexen. Similarly, water and hexan are not miscible with each other and will quickly separate into two layers even after being shaken well. Polarity can be separated to different contributions. For example, the Kamnit Taft parameters are dipolarity polarizability, hydrogen bonding acidity, and hydrogen bonding basicity. These can be calculated from the wavelength shifts of three Euro 6 different solvatochromic dyes in the solvent, usually Reichardt's dye, nitronaline, and diethyl nitronaline. Another option, Hansen's parameters, separate the cohesive energy density into dispersion, polar, and hydrogen bonding contributions. Polar protic and polar aprotic, solvents with a relative static permittivity greater than 15 can be further divided into protic and aprotic. Protic solvents sylvate anions strongly via hydrogen bonding. Water is a protic solvent. Aprotic solvents such as acetone or dichloromethane tend to have large dipole moments and sylvate positively charged species via their negative dipole. In chemical reactions the use of polar protic solvents favors the SN1 reaction mechanism, while polar aprotic solvents favor the SN2 reaction mechanism. Physical properties of common solvents, properties table of common solvents, the solvents are grouped into non-polar, polar aprotic, and polar protic solvents and ordered by increasing polarity. The polarity is given as the dielectric constant. The properties of solvents that exceed those of water are bolded. Hansen solubility parameter values The Hansen solubility parameter values are based on dispersion bonds, polar bonds, and hydrogen bonds. These contain information about the intermolecular interactions with other solvents and also with polymers, pigments, nanoparticles, etc. This allows for rational formulations knowing, for example, that there is a good HSP match between a solvent and a polymer. Rational substitutions can also be made for good solvents that are bad. The following table shows that the intuitions from non-polar, polar aprotic, and polar protic are put numerically a euro. The polar molecules have higher levels of IP and the protic solvents have higher levels of IH. Because numerical values are used, comparisons can be made rationally by comparing numbers. For example, Astonitrile is much more polar than acetone but exhibits slightly less hydrogen bonding. If, for environmental or other reasons, a solvent or solvent blend is required to replace another of equivalent solvency, the substitution can be made on the basis of the Hansen solubility parameters of each. The values for mixtures are taken as the weighted averages of the values for the neat solvents. This can be calculated by trial and error, a spreadsheet of values, or HSP software. A 1-1 mixture of toluene and 1,4-dioxin has ID, IP and IH values of 17.8, 1.6 and 5.5, comparable to those of chloroform at 17.8, 3.1 and 5.7 respectively. Because of the health hazards associated with toluene itself, other mixtures of solvents may be found using a full HSP dataset. Boiling point. An important property of solvents is the boiling point. This also determines the speed of evaporation. Small amounts of low boiling point solvents like diethyl ether, dichloromethane, or acetone will evaporate in seconds at room temperature, while high boiling point solvents like water or dimethyl sulfoxide need higher temperatures, an airflow, or the application of vacuum for fast evaporation. Low boilers Boiling point below 100 AA degrees Celsius, medium boilers, between 100 AA degrees Celsius and 150 AA degrees Celsius, high boilers, above 150 AA degrees Celsius, density, most organic solvents have a lower density than water, which means they are lighter and will form a separate layer on top of water. An important exception, most of the halogenated solvents like dichloromethane or chloroform will sink to the bottom of a container leaving water as the top layer. This is important to remember when partitioning compounds between solvents and water in a separatory funnel during chemical syntheses. Often, 
specific gravity is cited in place of density. Specific gravity is defined as the density of the solvent divided by the density of water at the same temperature. As such, specific gravity is a unitless value. It readily communicates whether a water-insoluble solvent will float or sink when mixed with water. A health and safety, fire, most organic solvents are flammable or highly flammable, depending on their volatility. Exceptions are some chlorinated solvents like dichloromethane and chloroform. Mixtures of solvent vapors and air can explode. Solvent vapors are heavier than air. They will sink to the bottom and can travel large distances nearly undiluted. Solvent vapors can also be found in supposedly empty drums and cans, posing a flash fire hazard. Hence empty containers of volatile solvents should be stored open and upside down. Both diethyl ether and carbon disulfide have exceptionally low autoignition temperatures which increase greatly the fire risk associated with these solvents. The autoignition temperature of carbon disulfide is below 100 AA degrees Celsius, so objects such as steam pipes, light bulbs, hot plates and recently extinguished Bunsen burners are able to ignite its vapors. Explosive peroxide formation Ethers like diethyl ether and tetrahydrofuran can form highly explosive organic peroxides upon exposure to oxygen and light. THF is normally more able to form such peroxides than diethyl ether. One of the most susceptible solvents is diisopropyl ether. The heterotum stabilizes the formation of a free radical which is formed by the abstraction of a hydrogen atom by another free radical. The carbon-centered free radical thus formed is able to react with an oxygen molecule to form a peroxide compound. A range of tests can be used to detect the presence of a peroxide in an ether. One is to use a combination of iron sulfate and potassium thiocyanate. The peroxide is able to oxidize the Fe2 plus ion to an Fe3 plus ion which then form a deep red coordination complex with the thiocyanate. In extreme cases the peroxides can form crystalline solids within the vessel of the ether. Unless the desiccant used can destroy the peroxides, they will concentrate during distillation due to their higher boiling point. When sufficient peroxides have formed, they can form a crystalline and shock-sensitive solid precipitate. When this solid is formed at the mouth of the bottle, turning the cap may provide sufficient energy for the peroxide to detonate. Peroxide formation is not a significant problem when solvents are used up quickly. They are more of a problem for laboratories which take years to finish a single bottle. Ethers have to be stored in the dark enclosed canisters in the presence of stabilizers like butylated hydroxide toluene or over sodium hydroxide. Peroxides may be removed by washing with acidic iron, 2, sulfate, filtering through alumina, or distilling from sodium benzophenone. Alumina does not destroy the peroxides. It merely traps them. The advantage of using sodium benzophenone is that moisture and oxygen are removed as well. Health effects General health hazards associated with solvent exposure include toxicity to the nervous system, reproductive damage, liver and kidney damage, respiratory impairment, cancer, and dermatitis. Many solvents can lead to a sudden loss of consciousness if inhaled in large amounts. Solvents like diethyl ether and chloroform have been used in medicine as anesthetics, sedatives, and hypnotics for a long time. Ethanol is a widely used and abused psychoactive drug. Diethyl ether, chloroform, and many other solvents are used recreationally in glue sniffing, often with harmful long-term health effects like neurotoxicity or cancer. The commonly available solvent methanol can cause permanent blindness and death if ingested, and is also dangerous because it burns with an invisible flame. Some solvents including chloroform and benzene are carcinogenic. Many others can damage internal organs like the liver, the kidneys, or the brain. The solvent 2-butoxyethanol, used in fracking fluids, can cause hypertension and metabolic acidosis. Chronic exposure to organic solvents in the work environment can produce a range of adverse neuropsychiatric effects. For example, occupational exposure to organic solvents has been associated with higher numbers of painters suffering from alcoholism. Ethanol has a synergistic effect when taken in combination with many solvents. For instance, 
a combination of toluene benzene and ethanol causes greater nausea vomiting than either substance alone. Many solvents are known or suspected to be cataractogenic, greatly increasing the risk of developing cataracts of the lens of the eye. Solvent exposure has also been associated with neurotoxic damage to color vision. Environmental contamination, a major pathway to induce health effects arises from spills or leaks of solvents that reach the underlying soil. Since solvents readily migrate substantial distances, the creation of widespread soil contamination is not uncommon. There may be about 5,000 sites worldwide that have major subsurface solvent contamination. This is particularly a health risk if aquifers are affected. General precautions Avoid being exposed to solvent vapors by working in a fume hood, or with local exhaust ventilation, or in a well-ventilated area, keep the storage containers tightly closed, never use open flames near flammable solvents. Use central heating or electrical heating instead, never flush flammable solvents down the drain. Read material safety data sheets for proper disposal information, avoid the inhalation of solvent vapors, Avoid contact of the solvent with the skin a euro many solvents are easily absorbed through the skin. They also tend to dry the skin and may cause sores and wounds. See also, free energy of salvation, solvents are often refluxed with an appropriate desiccant prior to distillation to remove water. This may be performed prior to a chemical synthesis where water may interfere with the intended reaction, list of water miscible solvents, lioluminescence, occupational health, Partition coefficient is a measure of differential solubility of a compound into solvents, solvation, solution. Solvent systems exist outside the realm of ordinary organic solvents, supercritical fluids, ionic liquids and deep eutectic solvents, water model, water pollution. References Bibliography, Lowry, T. H. and Richardson, K. S., Mechanism and Theory in Organic Chemistry. HarperCollins Publishers 3rd ed. 1987 ISBN 0-06-364044-9, External links, 1, Solvents in Europe. Table and Text Ochem Lecture, Tables Properties and Toxicities of Organic Solvents, CDC, Organic Solvents, NIOSH Workplace Safety and Health Topic.